He says, uh, I only got the second half as I work until nine, but how did the Vikings win? Uh, with all the mistakes and penalties, I can't believe that Wigan never won it. Bet marks raging. Well, he's uh, got his answer to that. Brian Davies, all right, Brian, he said, so not only has Sean Wine turned Wigan into the most boring team in Super League, but now they can't even beat their own reserve side, (laughs) despite them trying to let Wigan win. Uh, Wine rode on Maguire's coattails in his first season, but has done nothing since. Sack the bumbling thug. Well, he won the double in his second season, but but since then he has become a, a, a vacuum of joy. <laughs> um, for, in, especially with ball in hand, we're going. But uh, I did crack a joke at half time when we brought our under 19s out, the ones that had signed contracts to be in the full time squad and yeah. stuff for next year. I, I cracked a joke um, saying, like, the witness fans will be particularly eager to see what's <laughs> to going see on here to see who they might get in their own side. It depends on whether or not Dennis Best decides to loan him back to his old club this time next year, I would have thought. Uh, and just Davies Knight, he said, watched this on replay on Friday afternoon here in Australia and was mouth agape with the defence from witness, especially with 11 men. A sterling performance. Final word on this one, give to Paul Luda Lewis. Yeah, good stuff. He says, before this game started, I was still on the not one minute matters bandwagon. I take it all back. The witness players showed what great integrity rugby league players have. Amazing defence from the boys. Added to an awful Wigan attack meant that by the time the final whistle went, I was a nervous wreck. I didn't feel as ecstatic as I did after the game in March, but I was buzzing all the same. Okay, so on to... Can I go back to enjoying the show now, then? Do you think... Well, yeah, look, you've, you've had your hair shirt on over this for, for a lot longer than I anticipated you wanting to, to be perfectly honest. So, yeah, by all means. Uh, Friday night, then, saw Castleford take on Wakefield, Battle of the Five Towns. And as I predicted, Castleford came out on top 46 points to 22, helped in no small part by uh, Albert Goldthorpe medal winner Luke Gale's multiple assists, I would have thought, Mark. Yeah, um... Like the interesting one for this one is it's probably like an absolute opposite of the other game that we just spoke about in terms of that was yeah. one side of the ball wasn't very great and it was attacks. Mm. <laughs> and this was one side of the ball <laughs> wasn't very great and it was defences. Defense. Yeah. Um, it looks like Castleford, because they were 34 8 up at half time, it looks like they put the shoe, the, uh, the queue. Yeah, the shoe, the queue on the rack. Yeah, they put the shoe in the first half and the queue on the second half. The but, shoe in the queue. But um, to be honest. Um, it's it's not it's no less than what you expect from Castleford this year, really, is it? This this attacking flair and yeah. Wakefield are a both but, but, sides are beaten beaten up, but what what it does to one side is different to what it does to the other side because Castleford still have confident ball players in that side and they'll take any chance they're given. The likes of yeah. well that 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 axis if you go through yeah. from the um, axis of awesome of Gale, Dawn, Webster. Yeah. And Solomona yeah. on those swing players out to the left hand side, and you throw into that Junior Moores, who actually is a name that deserves dream team conversation, even though he's not Bateman or Curry, so yeah. you know, you don't get in. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he does, certainly deserves to be in the conversation, and in fact, if you know, if, if you if you demerit Bateman enough, he might be the next, next man up there. Well. The thing with Bateman, and I know we're getting right off topic now, is that he, he has missed an extensive period of the season through suspension. But the now, thing admittedly, with, club imposed. The thing with Moores is he's been exceptional, and he's played in a number of different positions, but predominantly the second row. But he's played a lot of the recent to the, the end of the season at loose forward, and yeah. not had as much of spells on and off this year as, as I've seen before as well. And he's just torn it up, hmm. um, and that, now he's not the most consistent performer in terms of being in the right spot in defence and stuff like that and sometimes he you know throws a, a loose ball or what have you but it's exciting to watch isn't he yeah, and if you, so. if, you, if you have a middle weapon like him and Grant Millington let's be fair who's been exceptional all year too um, and you're talking about so many good attacking parts of this team that you can see why they're, they're scoring 46 points whilst it looks like they've been half arsed for half the game yeah I mean, they're a great attack inside. Yeah, absolutely. Just outscore the opposition. It's, they are they are great fun to watch. Uh, good news for Wakefield, though, was the return of Tom Johnson and in some style as well. He yeah. got himself some scores. So so that's good to see. And uh, maybe, maybe he floats his name back into the England conversation, especially with... 
some of the well, injuries we've got going on. Going on. So. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, I think Joe Burgess put his name back into the hat for that, and um, Jermaine McGillery is back on the field and not not doing too shabby. Even He's fallen, against yeah, championship falling, falling over against championship yeah. teams, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. So tell us some of the story of this one then. Well, eight tries to five, eight breaks to three, more successful offloads, more tackle busts, fewer errors and fewer penalties conceded, all show how much cast were on top. One stat, though, makes no sense. Apparently, Wakefield made 53 more metres in this game than Castleford. All right. I suppose with extra errors and penalties, and on that ground, penalties are worth 10 metres more than on any other ground, aren't yeah, they? true. And if your errors come in your own half, then Castleford haven't had to make too many, too much meterage. But, um, yeah baffled by that but um, well, I are. suppose Wakey did have a bit of a free run of things in the second half when Cass yeah. switched off possibly so yeah mm. interesting stuff individually who stood out for well, us well Denny Solomon a three tries seven tackles three clean breaks Luke Gale with a try five try assists I didn't I didn't go back and check this over actually but I'm guessing that's the most by an individual in a game this year I think we had a couple of I think Luke Walsh had a couple of fours didn't he earlier on Ooh. in the campaign uh, Jake Webster with a try 106 metres and Junior Moore's 152 metres so those those players we talk about there you go anybody for Wakefield then who stood up for those guys yeah, yeah no, they, they had the guys because um, you know, they scored some points, didn't they? Tom Johnson, two tries, 158 metres. Reese Lynn, a try and 104 metres on the other wing. Tinir out, a 102 metres in the middle. And Craig Hall, what, a, what, a, what absolute... like He's just going to rip it up in League One, isn't he, next year? You've got to think. If he switches his mind onto the task, three try assists for him in this yeah, game. Yeah, as long as he approaches Playing at full this time around. Playing to his, as long as he approaches it with the mindset of, I'm going to play to the best of my abilities in this division. Rather than think he's just going to have a switch off a bit, yeah. Exactly. Then, then, yeah, he's going to carve up in League One, you would think, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. Come out of fan reviews, then. Yeah, absolutely. Fat Boy Rob got in touch. He says, easy win for Cass. I... Uh, in the battle of the injury lists, Cass blew Wakey away in the first half, with Denny helping himself to another hat trick and Ralling Gee selling a dummy to the entire stadium before scoring. Wakefield showed some heart after Hampshire chased down Tom Johnson, then needlessly got himself Simbin. Not a bad match for a dead rubber. Tyler Cass fan got in touch too easy at times for Cass, which led us to switching off at times defensively. But our attack was clinical and we were always going to outscore our opponents. For whom Tom Johnson, Johnston, forgive me. Uh, made an impressive return. For Cass, Rangi is getting more involved with every game. I hope Powell finds a way to keep him beyond this season. Ollie Smith said, not the best of games in my opinion, not enough competition between the two sides, but some classy tries by Cass. Particularly enjoyed Dawn's try and nice to see the Rangi of old. Impressed with Savelio and Cook as well. Thought Hewer's performance dropped compared to last week at Wembley. Where everyone had a Wembley hangover. Absolutely. Uh, Ruth, she said, it wasn't the best game game of the season but it was great to continue uh, to see the commitment and the closeness of the team. Danny is one of the youngest legends in Super League and Rangi has so much joy in his play. Uh, we still let in soft tries though and we need to be really sharp against Saints. I think that's Ruth, um, is it Pal, Pal, Pal. Pal. Is it Presh? I think it's that roof. We haven't heard from it for a while, so possibly if it is, it's nice to have on board. If it's a new roof, nice yeah. to have you on board either always way. Good, always good to have a new roof. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so speaking of St Helens, as Ruth did, uh, they took on uh, not a depleted but a, a rotated, we'll say, Hall FC yeah. side down at uh, Langtree Park and emerged victorious, thirty-one points to ten. Q much whooping and hollering uh, from St Helens fans, but I would temper this. By saying that they they might have beaten Hull FC, but they didn't beat Hull FC. They beat you know a revision of that team, didn't they? The half time scoreline of ten six was more of a sort of reflection of yeah. There was some the stat padding quality yeah, between the two teams in 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 the main. Yeah. I mean, they didn't put Saints didn't put all the way till what the seventieth minute, seventy first minute when out of it, out of yeah. it, went over to the second try. Right. Um, at that point, there was still a six or eight point margin and. <laughs> even look, even the Hull FC players that were on the field looked and moved like they were, and even their coach alluded to it in the you know the immediate aftermath of the game. They they were all looking and moving like they had a hangover. And it like was the been. worst twenty points win of the season. I, I would say I, I was I found it quite boring the game. Mm. Um, if I'm completely honest, uh, but. But you can only beat what's in front of you. Saints so did what they sense. needed to do, yeah. and you know, and, and because they were more tuned in, and maybe they maybe they planned for that. Maybe they, they they understood that would be the way it would work. So let's load it up at the back end and 
and, and pad this out, you know. They, they weren't helped by a couple of blokes having terrible performances. John Wilkin springs to mind as, mm. as the main yeah. um, culprit there. Yeah. Um, but you got what you've been getting from Saints all year on the quality side of things in terms of Amor, Wormsley and Roby. Yeah. Um, why didn't Roby go off for a concussion test, though? I was convinced he should have gone off for a head check. And I've seen this a few times this weekend. Did there, you was, not? There, there was one in the there was one in the there was one in one of the games on Saturday and there was one in the NRL as well this weekend where I was convinced players should have gone off for head checks because it looked like they were dazed and they didn't get taken off. And Roby's was one of them. Who did he bang into? I can't remember, it was right under the sticks. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. But there that, I mean, that to me, I hope that isn't something that's creeping in. Creeping in. Mm. Um, you know, people are managing to learn how to not be pulled off or what. I hope that's not the case. I really do. And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying it was the case. I'm just saying that was the first one I noticed this weekend. Then I noticed it a few times in other games mm. for other teams after. So I hope it's there's nothing untoward there. Um, but you got those three playing well. And you got Lomax, Lomax looking threatening. Yeah. And, you know, he, he put a couple of tries on, didn't he? Um, and you got Swift playing really well, working really hard, tracking back well, going up the field well, I love watching um, Adam making Swift play breaks right. and yeah. sticking his tongue out and telling you which way he's going to run it. Hey, he sticks his tongue <laughs> and all of that. But we love Adam Swift, don't we? Yeah, on he's the, on the Super League pod. Yeah. And, um, and I think he was. He was probably the player who was the, the catalyst for the turnaround in a way because of his energy, his enthusiasm, his breaks that he made, uh, the sort of meters he was making in in return game and stuff. And Jack Owens complimented that well. He finished his opportunities good, and you could see because he got that early kind of earlyish score. You could see his confidence then built from that, and he was a lot better mm. going on throughout the game in terms of taking balls and returning the yeah. ball and stuff. So um, that that's good for St Helens going into the the. Well, they're not officially confirmed now. Yeah, in the top four, are they? But, Near as damn it. Yeah. Near as damn it. Um, so and, and, and despite the fact that we're talking about them, you know, relatively disparagingly, actually, I keep, in the back of my mind, I can just you know, keep clicking, ticking these wins off, ticking these wins off. But we're not talking Once about the half-backs, we're not talking about the loose forward, we're not talking about... Yeah, but if you came up against you lot this week... And it was, a, you know, next week, let's say, for argument's sake, the league had finished and next week was the semi-final and they were playing you. you you'd, you'd have some serious reservations about Wigan's ability to beat even this St. Helens team. No, I wouldn't. Really? Honestly, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I would I would beg to differ at that point. Sorry, um, so tell us the story of the game then. Well, I was just going to, uh, yeah, well, handling errors are still a problem for Saints. Um, this is one of the reasons why I don't think it would... We would play the game differently if it was a semi-final anyway, but I don't think it's a problem um, in terms of... Uh, 17 this week for Saints handling errors 6 more than Hull conceded Hull had more ball and made the same amount of breaks but Saints tackled 3% better as a team and made 1.8 metres per carry more overall 2 um, for 190 metres more and a 5 try to 2 win Okay. Um, Jack In- Owens yeah. 2 tries 144 metres 2 clean breaks Adam Swift 5 tackle bus and 165 metres so the wingers doing their jobs um, and more Kyle Amor 126 metres off the bench and James Roby with a try assist and 109 metres um, for not Hull FC not a lot standing out for Hull FC this is, this is a barrel scrape isn't it not at all Liam Watts went for 108 metres which obviously is more than your average prop and he did look decent in the first half considering he was one of the Wembley players who did play and yeah. another one who really worked a lot harder than the one trying 93 metres even tells you but Sika Mano I thought he was probably Hull's, Hull's brightest light yeah. for most of this game but um, so he deserved his score that he grabbed in the in, in the you know yeah. in the game but and it actually, wasn't enough was it in a, in a back row where a lot of Hull FC players have been getting the plaudits this year Sika Manu brings that little bit of mongrel and as I've been I've, I've always been a big I've always been a big fan anyway but like when you think about the pros that guys like Gaz Ellis have been getting and, and, and even Westerman season has been really good and stuff like that Who? not Westerman sorry Minicello. Minicello, thank you. Um, you know, the routes that they've been getting, Westman's like, fucking Warren. Um Sikamano's come in and gone about his business and has been a you know an important part of that Warren of that whole pack. It does more Why do I want to talk about Warrington? It does more it does more unexpected things, doesn't he, than the others, I suppose you mm. could say. Um but in all facets of the game. Yeah. And he's 
just got that little bit of he's just he's that little bit of sand in your the little stone in your shoe. Do, in your I hand. don't see him like that. Oh, he's he, he likes to. I think he likes to get in the ear and he. Yeah, I, oh, I've, I've seen him two or three times. I think, oh, cheeky little boy. Um, fair play. Um, so, uh, fan review: Wally Frogmore. 